Hey, it's Cliff here from Down Under. Okay, so this is part two of setting your CNC lathe tools, mounting and setting the tool offsets. Tool offsets, work offsets, master tool, all these types of concepts are quite difficult when you're learning setting a CNC. One thing I found really helped me to understand it was that tool, if you think of tool offsets as the relative distance between the tools in X and Z. So they're all fixed. Once you've set your tools in place and tightened them up, they're all fixed by the steel mounting of the machine. So the relative distances in the X and the Z are never going to change unless you remove the tool. And those relative distances are set here in the tool offset table. So they're all interlinked or interconnected. So once that's been done and they're all set, you can use any tool for a master tool. It doesn't have to be tool zero or tool one or anything else. You just choose a tool. As long as it is selected here in the, uh, on the main screen, tool two is in place. And I'm calling that tool two. And I'm setting the Z. Then I can set the Z in the main DRO, and that sets the work offset. Now, it could be any tool, but the main thing is to choose a tool that's easy to replicate when you start up in the morning and you want to double check it. I'm choosing this OD tool. I'll take a skim cut on the diameter and measure that. Then when that tool is set and the work offset is set in the main DRO, as long as I've got that tool selected, then all the other tools are connected to that. They're all fixed in position relative to the settings in the tool table. That doesn't change when you start up the machine in the morning. That is retained. All the positions, mechanical positions are retained. So everything is back to how it was the day before just by selecting one master tool, getting your work offset in the main DRO. So for example, if you want to set the X position for a drill or a reamer, you can tighten it up in position. Um, and rather than dial up on the bore, you tighten up in position and it'll spring and bias, deflect over one way or the other. But then you finally set it at the end where it's uh, cutting, which is the important point, isn't it? That that's central. And you can set it with a, can't really see very easily here, with a dial indicator there. And get it central between one position and the other. But remember, don't kid yourself that you're going to get perfection. That dial indicator is going to be sagging slightly with gravity. It's a short, stiff a dial indicator frame and it might only be sagging a thou or so but you're not going to get high precision by virtually any method and a uh, a probe tip is going to have problems too that for setting something like a drill there's, there's no one solution for setting your tools you might be wondering why I'm talking about tool height setting gauges when in theory you're supposed to shim the uh, turret up so that it is in the correct position to take a standard tool height for example a three-quarter inch tool 19.05 and yeah sure I did that and it does suit tools that are 19.05 but then there are other tools that you have that aren't 19.05 uh, for example this tool here and um, in that case uh, one thing you can do is to make up your own shims to exactly the right thickness rather than using a stack of little shims that gets a bit messy and unstable. And I made a couple of blocks of the right section um, and then I can just do the maths, work out what the thickness of the shim is, you know, three, four, five millimeters thick, bandsaw it off and then mill it down to that exact thickness and then redress the end of the block ready for next time. So slowly I'm using up these blocks making different shims. Here we have uh, some shims for specific tools. There's one mounted in there. 
So you, you gradually build up a range of these specific shims to bring different tools up to the tool height, for example 19.05. And also different split bushes so that you can clamp on different diameters in the uh, three quarter inch bore for the uh, bores that hold the round tooling for the gang tooling and the turret bores. So you might be thinking well why do you need that special height gauge when you've got shims that order automatically produce the right height. Well it's good for a double check um, that you can quickly slide it into position and double check you've got the right height. It's also good uh, where you've got a rotational type of tool like a boring bar that you want to be able to turn it round and attain the correct height um, and you want to check that other tools haven't sprung or biased off. Um, so there are quite a few uses for having a height gauge um, and a mark to approximately set the uh, X position. You can leave a little bit of metal on, take a test cut, measure the bore and then uh, fine tune the settings. I know a lot of you guys have probably got a CNC mill and you're thinking about a CNC lathe as I was a year or so ago and you're sort of envisaging as I was that well you can fill your turret and your gang tools up with the most commonly required tools set them all up that takes a bit of time shim them up and dial them in um, but once that's done you can leave them all in place and machine most of your parts without having to change any tools quickly do the, the program with conversational or fusion or whatever and away you go. But in reality that only suits a certain type of work. If you have the type of work that's very simple and to, not to high tolerances that is OD turning and doesn't have much inside diameter turning and the sort of families of very similar parts you may be able to do that. But if you're doing a wide variety of work and a lot of internal turning work then each job that you set up will require a different set of tools and quite a lot of time spent setting those tools in position. And unfortunately, um, there's so many different internal tools, different size drills, different size boring bars, different projection lengths for each job that you're going to spend a lot of time setting. And it's not uh, a quick and efficient way to machine parts unless you're doing reasonably long production runs. You know, I wouldn't advocate using a CNC lathe to machine one part that's different from the other parts you've been making because you'll spend more time setting than you will machining anyway. It suits decent sized production runs. Um, and you're going to spend quite a bit of time setting your tools. Especially if you've got internal machining to do, this will almost always require tool changes, several different tool changes. And remember, a tool change is not just a matter of plugging in another tool. If you're working to high precision and you've got deep bores, it will require mounting and aligning the tool. And there's a lot of traps there and a lot of care needs to be given to the mounting and aligning. And then the second stage is setting that tool work offset. I know I'm sounding a bit negative here, but I just want to give a bit of a reality check that would have been uh, useful to me as well if I'd heard this before I bought my lathe. Um, although, don't get me wrong, a CNC lathe is a fantastic machine for production runs of parts. If you want to make 50 or 100 parts, it is such a fantastic way to produce those parts. And, and I'm really glad that I've got this machine and I can do that. Um, but there, you do need to have a reality check about uh, the difficulties of setting it up uh, for certain types of work and be aware of this and make sure that it suits your intended use. I actually think there's a real uh, risk here that people buy their first lathe, they, they don't have a manual lathe and they buy a CNC lathe as their first lathe for doing low volume production when actually a manual lathe would be a better choice. A CNC lathe is fantastic for large volume production or for producing families of similar shaped parts where you can utilize the tooling set up on your turret and your gang tooling shapes. Um, and those two situations, a CNC lathe 
the streets ahead of a manual lathe. But if you're doing uh, low volume production of widely different shape parts, then a manual lathe is probably going to be a better choice in many situations. Notice I keep wandering off into the subject of uh, when you should buy a CNC lathe and when you should buy a manual lathe. Now, there's one thing I haven't mentioned is the uh, quick change tool holder option in the front in this video. Um, but I, I would say that if you're buying a, a CNC lathe with a quick tool change tool holder, in most situations um, you're not going to be able to run it automatically and therefore not capitalize on the benefits of having a, a CNC lathe. And you probably in most cases would be better off with a manual machine. As I've said, the main, main reason for buying a CNC machine is when you're doing large volumes or you're doing small volumes of similar parts that are sort of uh, family shapes that are similar so you can utilize the tooling. But there is one other situation where a CNC machine is an advantage and, and I should mention it here, I've overlooked it. As in milling, where the shape is complex and doesn't lean, lend itself to manual machining via the normal manual machining axis slideways for example complex curves and angles and transitions for this type of work you know uh, in a lathe that might be for example a curved shape curved mute cone for a wind instrument or something like that but it's just too difficult to manually machine and in the past you would use a uh, copy lathe or a a profiling lathe, then in that type of work obviously is a great application for a CNC lathe and you may only be making one of these parts but you really can benefit from the ability to machine complicated angles and transitions and curves therefore it's justifiable for that reason as well and I sort of left that out previously. If you're interested in that setting gauge it's just a piece of aluminium machined on this top surface to the center height of the lathe with a little block screwed on the bottom that's to the profile of the dovetail held in place with one cap screw with a bit of clearance so that you can uh, juggle it into the best position and fine tune the mark for the X position to set the approximate X position. That's all it is. It's probably got some further development to be done on it, uh, but that's just a basic prototype. I'm thinking maybe um, an improvement to that design would be to have a little adjustable uh, angle block on the top of the gauge that produces a little square similar to the Mar Plus and Blum and Renishaw uh, lathe setters that you saw at the start of, the, uh, of, of this video or the first video. Um, that could be great. I can see a few um, problems with it though, so I'm just going to mull it over for a few days. So if you've got any ideas there guys, drop me a comment under this video. Having a tool probe of some type that fits inside the chuck or a collet is not ideal. Um, you saw on that uh, the, the Marplus uh, example at the start of the last video that it's swung on a very accurate setting arm. Um, you really want to be independent of the chuck with this uh, with a probe um, because a, a chuck is not that accurate, uh, neither is a collet, and also you may have a job in there. So you really want to get around that. You want to connect it onto the machine and not onto the spindle. So to summarize the last two videos on low-cost CNC tool setting, um, while it might be very appealing to us hardware junkies to have a probe that will automatically set the tool offsets, um, something like the Pathpilot probing routines, um, there's all sorts of reasons why it's unlikely to be practical for these low-cost machines. It's certainly worth having setting gauges and various little gadgets to speed up the process but I think the bottom line is the problem is that the actual cut that is taken after being set with a probe is going to be different than it should be. There's going to be tool spring, uh, settling of slideways under vibration, 
backlash settling and so on that will produce a different diameter uh, in the critical diameter area than the probe indicated it would be. And so the whole advantage of it speeding up the tool setting process is actually wasted. And I can sort of sense that's going to be a problem. Um, I've just found that the reality of machining to find tolerances on these low cost machines means a little bit of hand, hands on tweaking and that takes away the advantage of an automatic probe tool setter. Because remember, a probe for a lathe tool setting is a very different beast to a probe for setting your work offsets in a milling machine. A probe for a lathe has to set the finished size of the work. Um, that's not the case in a mill. You're just setting your work offsets. Um, but in a lathe, you're attempting to use the tool setter to set the size of the part. And that is a much higher end requirement and it's probably too much to expect of a low-end value machine. Not that I'm knocking Tormac in any way here. The Slant Pro 15L is a brilliant, productive little machine. We just need to be realistic about our expectations of it. Alright, thanks for sticking it out to the end. Catch you again. Cheers.